Do you have an overactive bladder, but want to know what you can do on your own to treat the symptoms? Well, stay tuned because today I'm going to go in depth about one of the behavioral therapies for overactive bladder, and that is moderation of foods and beverages. All the things that you can do without leaving your couch to help your overactive bladder. So in previous videos, I've talked about what is overactive bladder, and we talked about sort of in general some of the conservative therapies that we can use for overactive bladder. These are things you can do at home without ever having to leave your couch, and it's something that I think is very important for every overactive bladder patient to know about. Today, I want to start a series where we will dive into each one of these behavioral therapies so that you can do them on your own. So an important point about fluid moderation is that it doesn't need fluid restriction. So I see patients in my office all of the time who are urinating frequently and urgently, and then we'll have them do a diary to see exactly how much fluid they're making in a 24-hour period. Most of these patients do not need fluid restriction. We know that for most people, about 1,200 milliliters to 1,800 milliliters. That's about 40 to 60 ounces of urine output per day is what's appropriate. Now understand, the amount of fluid that you need to take in to have that healthy urine output might be different depending on where you live and depending on the season. So someone in New Orleans in the summer may need more fluid than someone in Minneapolis in the winter. There are even some special circumstances. So I have patients who have kidney stones, and what we generally recommend for them is that they actually want to make two to three liters, 2,000 to 3,000 milliliters of urine per 24 hours. This helps to dilute the urine and reduce the risk of stones. But if that's not you, then again, you wanna aim for that 1,200 to 1,800 milliliter output. If you're making more than that, it just has a tendency to worsen your overactive bladder. An important point to make when we're talking about irritating foods and beverages is that they don't affect everyone's bladder in the same fashion. What I mean by that is caffeine may be irritating to a lot of people's bladders, but not everyone. It's a good idea to keep a food and beverage diary for a few days along with your symptoms and see which foods and beverages irritate your bladder. This list though is a good way for you to focus on some things that might be causing problems for you. The first and maybe the most obvious thing is caffeine, and it's probably something that a lot of us have heard about. And in fact, caffeine can lead to the symptoms of overactive bladder. If you drink enough caffeine, even if you don't have overactive bladder, you can actually develop the symptoms. But people with overactive bladder tend to have bladders that are a little more sensitive to caffeine. And while a lot of us think about caffeine as a bladder irritant, another thing to think about is acidic foods and beverages. For some people, taking in foods and beverages that are very acidic can lead to relatively acidic urine, and this can be aggravating and irritating to the lining of the bladder and worsen overactive bladder symptoms. Now, we can all think about very common acidic foods like oranges and lemons and lemonade and those sorts of things. Other fruits and vegetables like tomatoes, for instance, tomato juice and tomato sauce is highly acidic and can be irritating to some people's bladders. Cranberry juice is actually almost as acidic as lemon juice and can be irritating to the bladder of some people. Finally, there are some people that report that artificial sweeteners can be irritating to their bladder. For a while, it wasn't really understood how this could be possible, but there's actually some recent data to show that we actually have receptors in our bladder that are sensitive too sweet, almost like taste buds in the bladder. Now, none of us can taste the things that we eat in our bladder, but those receptors have a role, and one of those roles may be an irritation. So if you find that after taking in an artificial sweetener, you're going to the bathroom more frequently or more urgently, you may want to reduce that. Again, I can't stress enough about dietary changes. They're always more effective if we focus on moderation reducing the things that are irritating our bladders as opposed to complete elimination. It's more likely that you're going to stick with it over a long term. I hope that you see some benefit from reviewing dietary changes that can impact your overactive bladder. If you enjoy this content, feel free to subscribe to this channel or to go to our website for more information. As always, we want to help you to find your better bladder.